And hello again, everybody. This is Harbinger. I'm back to show you the progress of the uh, Minecraft animation studio that I'm working on here. It's basically done. Uh, it's at least done enough that I can give you a demo of it here. A few more features that I want to add that I will get into a little bit later in the video before it's actually released for download. But for now, I can show you the little test pattern that I have programmed into it here. switch wants to flip there. Nothing special right now. Um, it just loops through a bunch of things that I have programmed in. Line going all the way down the screen to show you all the pixels work. And then just a few random messes of pixels that uh, for some reason aren't updating properly. And the creeper face that is of course necessary. Everything on, everything off. I think I might have reached the limit of at least what my computer can handle working with redstone. Um, before everything was programmed in here, everything on the, the display did update at the same time. And I have to go back in just to double check and make sure that I don't need some more timing adjustments in there. But considering that it doesn't do the same thing exactly every time that it runs through on my screen, I'm, I'm guessing it's more my computer and the limitations of what the game can handle with the way that Redstone is currently handled by it, which will uh, hopefully get adjusted a little bit uh, soon by notch. I'm, I'm really, really hoping that that gets smoothed out a little bit, especially if he plans on implementing the music system, which once that is added, of course, there will be a music studio that I create and probably integrate, integrate that into this so that you can have a soundtrack along with your animations. But that's... Uh, that's farther down the road and depends on when that gets updated. I'm going to just let this cycle a little bit more here. Yeah, as you can see, you can see artifacts left there on the screen every time the frame updates. I'm again not sure why that happens. It wasn't happening before I added the clock and the timer in there. Um, and it shouldn't be there with considering the way that I did that, but discuss that a little bit here in a second too. Rather than run around inside the thing, let me uh, switch to cartograph real quick and give you an overall look at things. Alright, from here I think I can give you a much better description of things rather than running around inside of this monstrosity. Down here in this corner we have the control panel and the viewing platform. Uh, right now the control panel just consists of a single switch. Line of redstone runs all the way down around through here to the input of uh, basically the interrupter of the of the clock. That clock I think is just a seven clock. On the other side of that seven clock is a toggle flip flop to cut the clock's frequency in half because they run a little bit too fast and easier to do it that way than to build a giant like 21 ring counter or clock rather to uh, to try to keep the speed down but on the other side of that flip-flop this mess right here is the 4-bit counter right here in the middle of that 4-bit counter is a mess of repeaters and inverters designed to basically synchronize the, cl synchronize the counter without those you end up having bit 1 update on the, in on the output of the counter before bit 4 and uh, and everything in between. So by synchronizing that, we can make it so that uh, it doesn't accidentally start trying to display the wrong frame at the wrong time, which uh, partly wanted to do that because it slows everything down. Uh, it makes it uh, add some extra cycles in there and with this many torches for it to control on the other side, one uh, one blip out of sequence will, will slow things down quite a bit. Of course, it also makes things look better because it, uh, it, it doesn't try displaying the wrong frame out of sequence. This is the output line for the counter. And then right here we have the decoder that uh, tells it which frame based on the clock, based on the counter input to display on the screen. And then this mess of things right here, of course, is the bulk of it and is the actual display driver. All 100 pixels again are wired. 
bottom row controls 40, middle row here contains 30, top has the other 30. And going this way, we have each of the 16 frames overlaying that, uh, overlaying that to form a to form a grid. A few things left to be added to this. Uh, back here at the control panel, there are eventually going to be two other two other controls. Right now, whenever you stop the uh, stop the cycle, one of those frames is going to be constantly in the on state. Uh, what I need to do is put in an override switch that will turn off all the frames. That way, when you are in there trying to program in trying to program in frames, you don't have uh, you don't have interference from the one that it thinks is constantly on. That'll make things a lot easier to actually lay out your own with. Other thing I need to do is to make a reset, a uh, reset switch that'll reset the counter back to zero and, and force it to display the first frame. Otherwise, it'll just pick up from where it leaves off. One major reason that's necessary is that there is a huge delay from when you turn the thing off and on to when it actually stops cycling. Uh, once you flip the switch to turn it off, it will actually go through probably three or four, if not more, uh, frame more frame cycles before it actually comes to a stop so makes it much easier to reset things to the beginning of your animation not entirely sure how I'm going to do it but I do still plan on making this thing programmable as far as the maximum number of frames that it loops through not sure if I'm going to be able to do that with uh, with switches that control the frame rate or the frame limit or if I'm going to have to uh, make anybody that downloads this build their own logic gate to control that. Could do it with switches, but uh, that it's going to end up being just as complicated doing it that controlling it that way as it would be building a logic gate. But for those that aren't Redstone savvy, in the uh, in the instructions that I send out with the release download, it uh, it's going to have information in there and tell you how to set that up properly. Again, once those are added and I have gotten some documentation together for anybody who's interested in playing with this, this, uh, this will be available for anybody to download and play with who's interested. We've got another little thing here I'll show you real quick that's going to go along with that. And it doesn't look as good uh, on here as it actually does when it's full size. I had to scale it down a little bit to fit in the recording window here. But this is just a quick and easy to use little grid it's got everything all the pixels in it labeled the same way that they're used in the game and you just click on them and they toggle on and off and you can use that to help plan out your animation it makes things much easier especially having them all labeled and then I've got them split into three different colors the darker line here is the bottom row in the actual system itself, the bottom 40 pixels, and then the 30 in the middle, and then the 30 on top. This is just in case you want to have something scrolling side to side. You can build the entire thing, get it the way you want, and then you can transpose it into the into the individual frames down below. But again, that's uh, that's there for anybody who wants it. I'm not going to take the time to make that look any prettier or make it any more functional than it already is. It's just kind of a little add-on. But there you go. There is where the project is at at the moment. Um, again, once I have those extra features added to make things more easy to use for somebody that doesn't know the system inside and out, I'll, uh, I'll get this thing up for download. Probably do at least a two-part video series, too, on how to actually use this and program it. Um, and explain how to actually lay out the frames, how to control the uh, control the frame rate and adjust the frame limit with whatever system I use to do that. And then, of course, there are going to end up being a lot more signs in the middle of it as well. Um, right now, it's pretty easy to get lost when you're running around inside things and lose track of which which block is which pic controls which pixel. So. But once I'm done with that, uh, which may take a couple of days for me to be completely satisfied with it and uh, have everything explained to the extent that I want to explain it. Once that's done, it'll be up for download, and I'd look forward to seeing what people do with it. 
So, again, thank you for watching. Um, look forward to getting this finished and seeing what uh, people more creative than me as far as artistic ability um, is concerned or able to do with it.